sure you know by now, I'm Robson Green, the actor who likes to dabble in a spot of fishing. In fact, for over 30 years, I was quite happy just fishing for salmon and trout on the tranquil rivers of the Northeast. But a couple of years ago, that all changed. Over two series of extreme fishing, my eyes have been opened to some of the most mind-blowing fishing on the planet. Oh, my God! Look at this creature! I've had the lows. Fucking no! <laughs> and I've had the highs. Yeah, baby! And quite frankly, I'm addicted. Wow! That's why we came here! Look at that fish! Now I'm back for more. Much more. Yes! It's time for the Extreme Fishing World Tour! I'm going to be spending the next four out of five months on the road. Get it! Yes! We did it! Travelling over 60,000 miles to 14 different countries on four different continents. Yes! And he's in! Yes. This is angling heaven. All in the most extreme conditions imaginable. This week. I'll be chucking a hook into nine different seas and oceans. <laughs> Meeting all kinds of crazy fishermen. Why not? Why not? Why not? And risking life and limb. All in pursuit of the scariest. Ah! Oh my goodness! Yes! Weirdest. I have always wanted to catch one of these. Most powerful fish on the planet. This is the longest. I have ever had to fight a fish. Yes! It's my biggest ever challenge. That bastard fucking fish! Oh, yes. We got a fish on! Yes! We got him! This is Extreme Fishing! <laughs> so far on my world tour, I've been fishing in Africa. Well done! Asia. Oh, I got one! I got one! South America. Oh, look at this fish! And the Caribbean. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no world tour would be complete without visiting a country where they're even more fanatical about fish than I am. Japan. Only problem is, I've already got over 40,000 miles on the clock, and my body and my brain are in different time zones. I've got to deal with this jet lag thing. Now, what is guaranteed to send me to sleep? Exploring the bright lights of Tokyo's famous Shibuya district certainly offers plenty to keep my spirits up. There's a lot of thighage. That young lady has just gone by there. That wasn't a skirt, it was a bloody belt. It's not enough to cure the jet lag, though. It's three in the morning. Hi, is that room service? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well crack on with finding out just what makes Japan such a seafood superpower. More than 10% of the entire planet's fishing catch ends up here. Can you believe it? An extreme muscle. <laughs> and this market, Tsukiji, sells more than a million quids worth of it daily. I think this morning, every ocean-going fish is here in Japan. And one single bluefin tuna sold this January for over a hundred grand. But that's not why I'm here. I'm after a fish that has killed over 300 people in Japan in recent years. Ah, this is what I was looking for. Major Japanese delicacy. This is fugu, or blowfish. One of the most poisonous creatures on the planet. Eat the right part, it's eternal bliss. Eat the wrong part, eternal heaven. So thank goodness I've never had to catch one or eat one. Until now, that is. It says a lot about the Japanese that their favorite delicacy is a fish that can send you six feet under. And that they'll pay up to 100 quid for the pleasure. Mental. 
So, early next morning, in the pitch black, in a very foreign country, I'm about to try and catch and eat the most dangerous fish I've ever come across. It's bewildering and petrifying all at the same time. I've rarely been so glad to see a translator. This must be Mai. Mai? Hi. Robson. Nice to see you. Konnichiwa. Let's hope Mai can stop me being the Fugu's next victim. One false move on this boat, and I could be a goner. Fugu is so poisonous that catching it is very heavily regulated. That and the fact that Mr. Yamakawa here's main source of income is fugu fishing means he's not only taking a risk having a clueless rookie like me on board, but also doing me a great honor. Yeah, arigato, arigato very much. We head out to the fugu fishing grounds. It's clear this is a very serious business. Are the conditions good for catching uh, fugu today? And how long have you been a fugu fisherman? 20 years. That's a long time. With that amount of experience on board, looks like I'm going to get up close and personal with the infamous fugu, whether I like it or not. And they don't mess around when it comes to luring them in. But Mr. Yamakawi has put out 1,500 bait for the fugu, so... We must catch something, eh? Have you ever been fugu fishing and you've caught nothing? Yes. So much for that theory. Still, if we do get any on board, I'll have to have my wits about me. Fugu contain tetrodotoxin, which is 12,000 times deadlier than cyanide. And you don't even have to eat it. The poison's also in the fugu's skin. The crew might only have one pair of gloves on, but I'm taking no chances. Mr. Yamakawa, what is my job for the day? You have to help him yes. to cut the fugu's teeth out. Right, so not only is handling the fugu incredibly dangerous, I'm also expected to deal with their razor-sharp teeth. This is what we remove their teeth with, yes? The fugu have very, very powerful teeth. And it's not to prevent them from biting us, it's actually biting the other fish. And if I don't do it right, and they attack each other in the onboard storage tank, our expensive catch will be ruined. It's a moment we've been waiting for. I might see and catch me very first fugu. Time to pull in our precious, deadly catch. And the suspense is killing me. Well, the hooks are coming in. There's about ten hooks there. No fish on them. So far, there's only empty line and bait coming back up. Can't say I've come all this way. We're not going to get one. Please catch me a torafugu, Mr. Amakawa, so I can hold it up before he cuts its teeth out. This could be an enormous anticlimax. Oh, no. It's a mixture of excitement and trepidation as the next line comes in. And there is something on this one. Oh, bloody hell. I want to get close and see if we're in, but I have to stay focused on my own safety. If I am too close and not paying attention, I could get a fatal fugu in the face. We got one! We got one! Yes! Well done! When fugu feel threatened, they expand, meaning a bigger area of poisonous skin to contend with. And this one looks like it could explode at any second. There you have it! The Tora Fugu! The most iconic fish in Japan! And of course it's called the Tora Fugu, Tiger Fugu, but it's also a member of the Pufferfish family. Now why is it called a Pufferfish? Take a wild guess. Look at that. It's a defense mechanism. Some predator comes along and takes a wallop of that, it expands and the predator spits it out. We did it. That's what I came for. I'm extremely happy. It's time for me to do my bit. On a good day, Mr. Yamakawa can make over 3,000 pound. And although he's had me slowing him down... Goya, thank you. Today proves to be a decent haul. And I'm getting pretty good at detoothing the most dangerous fish in the world. Yes, get in! Mr. Yamakawa! Hey! Arigato! 
I'm loving being part of the team so much, I've almost forgotten that my day doesn't end when we pull into the harbour. Now then, there's only one thing more dangerous than catching a torafugu, and that's eating one. Mm. Parts of each fugu contain enough poison to kill 30 men. Only expert chefs that have trained for at least three years are allowed to prepare it. I hope this chef knows what he's doing, because if he cocks it up, I'm dead. What we got in here? Is it ready to eat? Yes, it's cooked already. Yeah. I'm dicing with bloody death here. Japanese version of Russian roulette. Very chewy. And no deadly toxin. Looks like I can finish the show after all. Mm. Hurrah! Very nice. Fugalicious. I bet they're wishing they'd left the poison in. Love that. After the break, I've got all the gear. And no idea. <laughs> oh, every fucking time I pick a fish up, I fucking lose it. Love that. I'm in Japan, a country that eats, lives and breathes seafood like no other. This is what it's all about. Sushi. And look at the size of the queue. These people are nuts about their fish. It's all a bit of a kerfuffle for a bit of sushi, isn't it? She's determined not to let me in. Hang on a second. This restaurant closes its doors mid-afternoon, because after that, they reckon the fish isn't fresh enough. I'd better get some before it shuts. For some reason, they're not letting me in. I don't know if you know, look, uh, Extreme Fishing 3, Robson Green. You may recognise me from such films as uh, Wire in the Blood. It was very popular in Japan. It was. Finally, though, I'm in. And I tell you what, after all that, it better be worth it. Raw fish for breakfast. I could make a habit of this. Now it's time to head out and catch some more for lunch. And given how high-tech the Japanese are, I'm expecting a lot from my transport. Obviously, my agent's been on the phone again. Loving the funky fishing wagon. Look at this. <laughs> Only in Japan. I love it. See what's inside. It's a bloody TV. <gasps> my drink's cool, my champagne. <laughs> and there's a microphone. My name's Robson Green. You may recognize me from TV. And I'll be your guide for the day. Now, would any of you like to hear a song? Two, three, four, I love you so much. I can't go to the toilet. <laughs> now, over the course of my world tour, I have caught some pretty massive fish. But today, I'm going for something completely different. I'm on my way to the Kano River, where there's an utterly bizarre method of sports fishing going down. From what I've already seen of Japan, nothing would surprise me. But it's all looking reassuringly normal so far. Oh, I see, this is what I grew up on. Mountains and hills in the background. Beautiful river with fish in it. Right up my street. Mind you, this is extreme fishing. So there might be a catch. I'm meeting a man who is really, really serious about fishing. Mr. Oweda has written three books on the subject and is a bit of a celebrity in these parts. Konnichiwa, Oweda-san. Robson-san. Robson-san, konnichiwa. 
Now, usually when I fish in a setting like this, I, uh, I use a, a fly rod, fly fishing. That's the thing I love. Is that what we will be doing today? No, no, no. no. Could we, uh, would you show me the gear we're going to be using today? Wrong. No. <laughs> How long's the rod? Hang on a second. How long's the rod? How long? What are you doing? You that's not a rod. <laughs> and if you think that's extreme, Mr. Awada's determined to deck me out in the oddest of get-ups. I'll go and get changed. You know what the punchline is? Fish are only that big. The IU. It's the smallest fish I've ever gone for. But apparently the reward is in the taste. It had better be, because what are we using to catch a six inch IU? Yes, it's a six inch IU. Partner. The fish is your partner. <laughs> this little fella. We're sending our tiddler out into the territory of the other IU, hoping to lure them into a fight and onto the hook Mr. Awade has put through the anal fin. So we're not really doing the catching, we're, we're asking the fish to do the catching, aren't we? What an interesting method. So we, we, we put the fish in and we say, good luck, good luck, hope you get attacked. In Britain, we'd call this a foul hook and any fish caught would be disallowed. Over here, though, they call it tomazuri, using one fish to catch another. And they spend thousands on it. Is this rod, is it very expensive? Very expensive. <laughs> 360,000 yen. That's nearly three grand. Goodness. Throw in the cost of the special space age box, the waterproof suit, and all the extras, and it's quite an investment for these IU fanatics. And it's the smallest fish I've ever tried to catch. So in he goes, my little IU. All I have to do now is wait for him to get into a fight and hope it's with a slightly bigger bully. Bizarre. <sighs> I would love to cast a fly in this river. It's perfect for fly fishing. But they use all this. And this, and this, and... This is so weird. I'm totally reliant on how aggressive my little fish is feeling. Unfortunately, this one seems to be a bit of a pacifist. See where the, the rocks are? So that's where he needs to go. <laughs> I think he's too close to us. He needs to go I'm over there, yeah. yeah. But he doesn't yeah. want to. You're fired. You haven't worked hard enough. Four hours later, and I try another tiddler. But he's not working for me either. And neither is Mr. Uweda's. Caught a twig fish. Still, got to get on with it. What am I doing wrong? Maybe Mr. Uweda can give me some advice. Mr. Uweda has just told me to be patient. <laughs> Mr. Uweda is a dentist, and quite frankly, this experience so far is like pulling teeth. But you know what? Looking at all these other fishermen, the guys under the bridge, cooking what they've caught, I wonder if maybe I'm missing something. It's late in the day, so I'm going to knuckle down ninja style and see what this surreal Japanese method brings me. It's getting dark. There's some nasty clouds on their way. Oh. 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 
Is that one? Have we got one? Yes! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We got it! I'm so happy! After four and a half hours, we caught a fish that is smaller than the bait! We did it! Excellent! I have waited all day to hold one of these. There you have it. Using this extraordinary method with a 30-foot rod and an amazing amount of expensive gear, we've caught a fish that is about four inches long. It's one of the most popular fish around here. The Ayu. Or sweet fish. Oh. <laughs> That's it. I've got it. I've got it. What I was going to say about that fish is, it's very popular, it's also known as the sweet fish, and it's also known as the fortune-telling fish, because when you catch one, it brings you good fortune, just like it's brought me good fortune. I pick it up and I lose it. How fortunate am I? But all's not lost, because five minutes later... Oh, yes, 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 yes! <laughs> Yes! yes! I did it! I did it! Yes. Come on, come and look! It's a whopper! Yes! But these little fellas are as hard to hold as they are to catch. With our bait, which was... Boots! <laughs> no! 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 It's the fortune-telling fish. Because catching this little fella... The fortune telling fish. <laughs> My fucking me. Every fucking time I pick a fish up, I fucking lose it. But in the end, we've got one IU to add to our lure fish. One tiny little IU. Oh, can we eat? We, we can't eat them, no. No, we put him back? No, no. No, we're going to eat. I'm going to eat him. Don't shoot the messenger, OK? This is how they do it in Japan. They tell me it's very tasty, or oishi, as they say here. You've had a very good day. And you know what? Despite its size, this ain't a bad way to fish. Sitting down by the river for a campfire with all the other anglers. Starting to feel like home. And we just bite it. Yeah. Let me tell you, that is very, very oishi. Oh, oishi. <laughs> oishi. Mmm. I was wondering why they do it. Now I see why. It tastes beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm one of the lads now. I was, I, I was fishing and I was talking to the camera, going, oh, no, go. Are you, are you? went, <laughs> <laughs> Twice! Two! Oh, bow, bow. OK, I know it was five times, but that would get lost in translation. Coming up, it gets even weirder when I risk my life freediving for fat snails. Size of that beauty. And to make matters worse, I'm going to have to eat them as well. Oh, dear Lord, that's a big willock, isn't it? I'm in Japan, a nation fanatical about fish. I've gone from the iconic... There you have it! ..to the moronic. But tomorrow I'm taking part in a tradition that's as old as the hills and the stuff schoolboy fantasies are made of. As I'm going out with the Amadivers divers tomorrow, I thought I'd do a bit of research. So I picked up Ian Fleming's You Only Live Twice. And in here, he describes the Amadivers divers as follows. To bond. They all seem beautiful and gay in the soft evening light. The proud, rather coarse-nippled breasts. The gleaming, muscled buttocks. Cleft by the black cord that held in place the frontal triangle of black cotton, the powerful thong round the waist with its string of oval lead weights. Sounds like tomorrow's going to be a drag.
For over 2,000 years, generations of scantily clad armor divers scoured the seabed in search of pearls. These days, it's sea urchin and snails they're after. And I've managed to wangle a special invite to one of their schools. What a treat. And did I mention I once auditioned as James Bond? No, honest, I did. And this is where they get changed into their outfits. So I'll just stand here. Nonchalant. Just be cool, Robson. Just be really cool. See you, my son. Not quite what Mr. Fleming led me to expect. But appearances can be deceptive. They might look like sweet old ladies, but in actual fact, these women can do stuff that would put your average Bond girl to shame. What's the deepest you've ever gone on a, on a single breath? It's about 10 meters or something. Yes. Wow. 30 to 40 seconds? Mm. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you probably know, I hate free diving. I can barely swim underwater for 10 seconds, let alone 30. Suddenly, I'm feeling a bit less like Mr. Bond. And to make matters worse, a storm last week has kicked everything up off the sea floor. So it's going to be like diving in the dark. These lovely ladies explained to me because of the water conditions. They've no idea what we're going to bring off the bottom. So, it's a magical marine mystery tour. Okay. okay. Yep, clear as mud. The reason armor divers have traditionally been women is because their body fat allows them to stay warm in the water for longer. And before you go all gok wan on me, it's a physiological fact. These women are so wonderful under there. They're just under there, having a look. Nothing's a problem. Not run out of breath. What they're doing is relaxing their bodies and exhaling in one extremely protracted breath. What I'm doing is flailing around in the current. Just to show you how strong that current is, I dived here, spent 15 seconds under the water, ended up 30 metres that way. But I've got to give it a go. Male pride is at stake here. It may only be three metres to the sea floor, but by the time I get there, my lungs are fit to burst. And the only things I can see are rocks and my own hands. Oh, the problem is, you're working so hard against the current. You're depriving the body so much oxygen, you can't stay under there for long enough to bring anything up. No problem for the lasses, though. They're so at ease down there. These three women are superb divers. Was Miss, Mrs. Oguda here is superb, and she has shown me the way. So there's something down here. They've spotted some giant snails known as sazai on the seabed. And bless her, Mrs. Okuda has shown me right to the spot. If I can just hold my breath for long enough, though. Oh, yes. And that is what I came for. I got my first giant willock. Very tasty. I'm at one with the Omar divers. I'm part of their team. They've accepted me. And it's not long before I snaffle two more juicy snails. <laughs> I got 
three! Oh. Please make me part of your team. I really enjoyed today. A three size eye. Size of that beauty. Huh? Is that? <laughs> hey? I've got the best Bond girls that have ever been on television. Yeah. What a team. <laughs> Roger Moore, Sean Connery, he's got no on us. And after all that diving, the ladies are even going to cook dinner for me. I tell you, if I wasn't married already... Only problem is, it's my catch that's on the menu. Snails are starting to sizzle, look. <laughs> Smells interesting. The Sarzai is considered a great delicacy here, to the point where they're breeding them to satisfy demand. But for the life of me, I cannot see why. Bit of a tough one, it? Oh, dear Lord, that's a big willock, isn't it? OK. OK. Sazai, huh? Sazai? Mm. Oh, see, is that Japanese for minging? Uh, it's not good. Can't eat it. Oh, see. Oh, see. Right, enough with the snails. Next day, I'm back on the road in the high-tech fishy fun bus again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I've still got it. <laughs> I'm heading for Suruga Bay at the foot of Mount Fuji, but not without a bit of sightseeing first. Flown over five and a half thousand miles. Travelled nearly 600 in the funky fish wagon. To come and have a picnic next door to one of the most iconic landmarks in Japan, Mount Fuji. And guess what? It's gone. It's disappeared. Mount Fuji's been stolen. But my translator has prepared me a picnic. And that is exactly what I'm going to have in front of Mount Fuji. That isn't there. So what's in my typical Japanese picnic box? A lovely warming soup, perhaps? <laughs> God, it's freezing cold. She's giving me ice cream. Oh, God. It's just giving me tubs of ice cream. But this isn't any old ice cream. Squid. I'm eating squid ice cream. <laughs> it's squid. And it's not just squid. There's crab, prawn, there's even eel ice cream. It's nice, huh? Oh, no, it's not. Delayed reaction. Oh. Oh, no, that, that really does taste like eel. <clears throat> Only in Japan. After the break, I discover some deep sea treasure. Look at that! and spend all night searching for a whopper. What have we got? Oh, my goodness! Today is my last day in Japan, and as much as I've enjoyed catching and eating snails and fiddly six-inch fish, I'm now yearning for some straightforward big white boat sea fishing. And if there's one thing Japan has plenty of, it's wide open seas full of huge fish. I can't wait to get out there. The waters of Suruga Bay by the port of Numazu are a mecca for Japanese sports fishermen, with bluefin and yellowfin tuna, grunt, horse mackerel and red bream all within reach. And, although it may seem, American Abdel Ibrahim could be the man to help me crack it. Abdel? Hi there. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Robson. Right. Pleasure to meet you. What a lovely day. No, we call it that, yeah. <laughs> but then... There you go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Is this my whopper? Yep. Ah, horse mackerel.
mackerel. Horse <laughs> mackerel. Another tiddler. Then nothing for four hours. Then the temperature drops, the rain kicks in, and everyone else goes home. But not us. I didn't fly 6,000 miles to the seafood capital of the world just for small fry. The local guys may have given in, but I'm a Geordie, and we never give up. But it's looking bleak, as the land of the rising sun turns into the land of no sun and pouring rain. This weather is awful. It's the worst kind of rain. With midnight approaching, we decide to change our tackle and technique to focus on one fish, the Japanese oil fish. It's a type of snake mackerel which can grow up to two meters long. If I can get into one, I'll have a proper fight on my hands. Middle of the bloody night, peeing down the rain. We better bloody catch an oil fish. Oil fish, come on, oil fish, come on, Abdul. Then something starts nibbling at my bait. Remember, when he hits, it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna feel like you can snag the bottom. I think I got one. Really, 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 really. Yes. There's a streak of bright silver in the water, so it's not an oil fish, but it could be a fish I absolutely love. Have you got a cutlass? Have you got a cutlass fish? Come on! He just struck yes. it in there, yes. man. Yes. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that extreme fish. What a beautiful, striking colored fish. Look at the dorsal fin, just rippling along the length of its body. I mean, just look at it. It's like looking into a mirror. How happy am I? It's a superb catch, but after 10 hours of fishing, I want something huge. I'm going back for the oil fish. And I'm straight in. Yes. All right, there we go, there we go. There we go. That, that was a good, slow, deliberate take. I think we might have the target. I'm yeah, trying to raise it right, just a little bit. Very good. Oh, we got a good fish on here. Oh. This is easily the biggest bite of the night. Just hold on to him, he's good. Come on. Come on, we waited all this time. Oh, but I got a fighting belt in there if you feel like you need one. This beast is ripping my arms off. Oh. Time for a bit of help. Can you type him? Okay. Oh, he's away, he's away again. He's away again. Now we do it, now we do it. You got it, you got it. Okay, sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. Yay! Oh. Now then, we've got an extreme fight in our hands. I think I've got an extreme fish on the end of the line here. All right, we got leader, we got leader. Okay, we got, uh, we might have a bit of color here. Okay, bring him up. Finally, I might be about to go big in Japan. Okay, wow. What have we got here? Oh my goodness! I don't want to lose him, I don't want to lose him! Okay, we, we, gotta, we got you. Don't I don't want to lose him! He's not getting off, don't worry. Stay calm. Now that is an extreme fish! That's an oil fish, and it's what we came for. We caught our target. Look at this extraordinary creature. You gotta be very careful when you eat it. If you eat large portions of this fish, it will go through you quicker than the bullet train of Japan. So you and the toilet will be good friends for a long period of time. Oh, I'm so happy! It's an extreme fish on extreme fishing! It's pitch black, it's pouring with rain, and I'm really happy. I'm a happy extreme fisherman. My Japanese adventure has been mind-blowing. I free-dived with lady pensioners. <laughs> what a team. Hooked a tiny IU using a bigger one as bait. Yes! 
I'm so happy! Stared death in the face, catching and eating the most dangerous fish on Earth. Yes, get in! And pulled up my first ever magnificent oil fish. I'm a happy extreme fisherman! I've simply loved Japan. Unique, bizarre and fish obsessed. It's my kind of country. My next fishing destination is Panama. One of the most extraordinary waterways in the world. Where big boats <laughs> meet big fish. Oh, yes! And even bigger danger. Did you see that lightning strike? 